Siemi Mbote to all the Bento family all over the world and to the dispersed and outcasts of his solele in the Eastern and Western Hemisphere. May the spirit of the Tanzambi, the spirit of Yakongo, come upon you wherever you are in the world. In this video, I am joined by my Leki, my younger brother, um, who is also in the prophetic, very gifted. And uh, I greet all the viewers and especially uh, honor to um, Nabi Yanata and my good friend Masia and uh, one of my Yaya Faria. Greetings to you, and of course, Pastor Mello, who is a teacher of us all in the Kikongo language. So, Leki, uh, just uh, introduce yourself. Kembo, Kembo, all the glory to Tatan Zambi. Thank you, thank you, Yaya, for uh, having me in this session. I'm very honored, and I honor you. And um, Kembo to the Most High. I'm so blessed to have a brother, a big, a, a, an elder brother, a Yaya like you, who has a lot of uh, anointing of the Tanzambi, who has a lot of knowledge about uh, his words. So thank you for having me in this session. I'm very happy. <laughs> yes, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes, today we'll be, uh, we're just having a conversation among brothers. And we hope that this conversation will inspire many of our Bantu youth. Uh, to start our uh, conversation, in um, the book of Isaiah 1, verse 3, uh, it says, The ox knoweth his owner, yeah, and the ass his master's crib, but ye solele does not know, my people do not consider. Um, as, as you look in the world, as we look in the world, yeah, we will see that uh, those African under the Sahara Desert, uh, the so-called African, the Bantu people, uh, the most of them who live in the diaspora also, uh, we always struggle with that sense of an, our own spiritual and religious identity yeah, as a result of colonialism, and, and yeah, you know, we, we have been conquered by the uh, Arabs. We received uh, Islam, eh? the faith of the Mohadins. We were conquered by the Christians and they put Christianity upon us. And as a result, we are serving um, the religion of other peoples. Yeah, so that's, uh, so, but how did you come into the awakening? How did you awaken, hmm, Leki? Yeah, so um, I can, since I can remember, I've had a lot of dreams. Um, I'm now 24 years old, and I can remember starting from age seven, I think. I always had a lot of dreams, but I never could put them together. So I, I would tell them to my, to my father or my mother, who were uh, who are still now in in uh, in 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 the belief, but even even them even they they couldn't uh, put the dreams together. So at a certain moment in time, when uh, Nabi Landu, when my other brother, he uh, he he told me about the awakening, he told me the truth about this awakening. I remembered the dreams which I had in my younger years. And when thinking about those dreams and when thinking about every word which Tatan Zambi spoke to me through uh, prophecies, I just couldn't, I couldn't walk away of it. Uh, it. It was so clear. It was so clear that all those dreams and even the dreams I get at this age, at this moment in time, it, it's so clear. So when I started to do a lot of research on my own and uh, putting all those lines, all those information together, uh, Tatan Zambi just spoke to me through my spirit and I had to accept it because what I always say, even to my friends is, 
if you believe in something, you always have to do research on it. Don't take it just for what it is, but do research and and uh, search for those elements which you can uh, put together. So uh, my awakening was was very special. It was very special, and um, I will I will talk about it about a dream which I had. Um, oh, but okay. yeah, 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 man. Let, let's let's start with the, with the conversation first. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We will come to that. Uh, now, when when we read in the book of Zephaniah, you know, uh, chapter three, verse ten, it talks about that the Tanzama will call his suppliant uh, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. So, uh, suppliant means worshipper. And so, so the worship of Tatanzambi, who's also called the daughter of his dispersed, dispersed means scattered. Uh, those people, those people are identified in um, uh, in, in in a geographic uh, area beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, Ethiopia's Kush, Kush Sudan. So beyond the areas of Sudan, we enter into the Congo areas and yeah, the Congos, and that's the place where you find the scattered people of Tatanzambi, yeah? um, the so-called uh, the, the Bantu, who are actually the Israelites of the Bible. All right. Now there is this book. It's a famous book um, from Babylon to Timbuktu. Yeah, from Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf uh, Venser, Venser, Rudolf Venser. At least I really uh, advise you if you want to learn about the migration history and you know you are very really curious uh, about it to read this book. But in this book, in chapter, let me see which chapter it is, chapter 127. I will just get, share my screen and we can read it together. Yes, can you can you see uh, the screen? Can you see the text? Yes, I see everything. Okay. Uh, now here. Uh, it talks about the black Jews in Angola. <laughs> now, we are from Angola. Eh? I'm born in Banza, Congo. Now, unfortunately, you are born in... Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the yeah. Netherlands. Mm, yeah, in the yeah, Netherlands. Yeah. But we are from Angola. See? And in this chapter, he talks about the black Jews of Angola. Yeah, and let, let us read and uh, elaborate on it. In the country called the Gabon near the Congo, there were black Jews known as the Bafumbu. Now the Bafumu, some writers call them by various names such as Mafambo or Mayomba. Now Mayomba actually, it's, it's a tribe in the Congos. Yeah, they live near the uh, Luango uh, territories. Yeah, so the Mafambo Mayombo, the Mayombo is a tribe. They're also called Mafumbu. It's a tribe. And in the book, in the book uh, of Luango, do you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, in the book uh, titled The Kingdom of Luango, this guy here, Ab Abba Royart, he talks about the Mo uh, Luango kingdom. And what we know is that the Mo, Mo, uh, Luango kingdom, um, the language that they spoke is, uh, is actually a dialect of the Congos, you know, of the Kikongo. And it's so, when, when I read this book, yeah, when I read that book, I was so amazed. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were black Jews in Angola. Uh, and so yeah. everything made sense. Uh, I read this book as a researcher, just to do some research and 
um, to, to get an understanding because when I awoken, I began to read a lot of books. Um, yeah. So, and let's see. And he says here also that the uh, Luango Jews, that they were uh, very active in commerce and they were mm. eager to learn okay? and that the Portuguese also brought with them uh, a base of knowledge okay? because the Portuguese were also learned men, the, the black Portuguese Jews. Many yeah. of them, when they were deported from Portugal or expelled from Portugal, they came into this area, eh? the Luango yeah. Kingdom, Angola Kingdom, the Congo Kingdom, they entered there. So that was just so amazing for me to, to yeah. learn about this, eh? because we grew up in Christianity eh? here in Europe, even though uh, this history is there. We didn't know about it. Hmm? No, so, you, don't, you don't learn. You don't. You don't learn this at school. Mm -hmm. You don't learn this at school. Even our parents don't talk about it. Yeah. You see, and when I awakened, I began to ask a lot of questions eh, to Pa mm -hmm. Emma, hmm? and and as I'm asking the questions, they are confirming it. They're saying, yes, yeah. we know there were black Jews in Angola. There are black Jews in Congo. This is part of our history, et cetera, et cetera. See, so it's just um, really amazing to hear out of the own mouth the confirm confirmation, but that also begs the question, why do our parents, uh, why don't they tell us? No, why don't yeah. they tell their children especially yeah. those in the diaspora because many of them just believe that it's it's not relevant we are in christianity mm -hmm. you know etc we are serving jesus it's not re uh, relevant eh? but to you the question what was your greatest challenge uh, in this awakening yeah it's it's you already talked a little bit about it it's it has a lot to do with uh, the mentality. Like I grew up in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And when you hear like this truth, when you hear uh, the facts about this awakening, it's, it's very hard to put it in place because in Christianity, you learn certain way, a, a certain way of thinking. Um, when you when you grow up, you learn a certain way of thinking, and what you what you learn from this awakening, from you learn what you learn from this truth, it's it's not going together, you know, it's not going with the, with the teachings you you got from uh, your pastors in in the church, it's not going together with the history you learned at school. So it's it's very hard. At the, at the beginning, it was very hard to put everything in place. Um, so I think that was one of the most difficult things to do, to just give it a place and to, to start believing in it and then start to living it. That was the most difficult thing to do, I think. And when I started realizing, um, the, the truth behind this awakening, when I started realizing how, uh, the world world works how uh, facts have been hidden from us. Th that was the point when um, I started uh, changing my mind. I started changing my way of thinking. And it's not only about uh, what you learn, the history you get, but it's also about um, giving the Mwandan Semi place to, to change your way of thinking, your, 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 your mind. So, to give to give a short answer to your question, I think the most difficult thing for me in this awakening was um, giving the truth because the truth hurts. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> but the most difficult thing for me was giving this truth a place. I think that that was the most challenging for me. Yes, that's that's powerful. That's awesome. 
That's awesome. Uh, um, we, we, um, yeah, we grew up in church, okay? We were, I was like a teenager, 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, but you literally grew up in church. Because yeah, you, you were born <laughs> in church. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we yeah, were yeah, playing yeah. the, the guitar it. and the bass, That's you know, we were making yeah. music. Yeah. Yeah. You were there as a small young boy. Yeah. Yeah. Baby, you know, we carried you everything. And now you yeah. are a young adult. Yeah. Yeah? So as someone who grew up in church, <laughs> and, you, and this truth reveals himself to you, yeah. It's it blows everything away, right? Yeah, it, it just it blew blows my mind. you away. Yeah, yeah, it blew my mind. It it's what you said. What you said is very important because I literally grew up in church. So um, from the moment I could think, from the moment I could could remember things, the things I remember is church. <laughs> That's one of the first memories I have. So when, it's, it's what you said. So when this truth uh, revealed itself to me, whoa, it was so difficult, man. It was so difficult. And also knowing that because um, I have, I'm the youngest of the family. I have like five brothers and I'm the youngest. And knowing that all of them, or like the others uh, still live, in uh, Christianity, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always think that a zombie, that I have had the, uh, the privilege to have uh, someone in the family always leading me, guiding me through, through, uh, through life, through uh, the belief, through, um, through my mentality and so and and even now you can see that um, you are the person who who brought this uh, revelation to me. So that's why I always think that in Zambia, even in Christi Christianity, I always was thankful for he for him giving me people in my in my environment. And that's why one of the advices I would give to younger people who just started in this awakening is um, be open to guidance. Be open to mentors who can lead you to this process. Because if you are willing to try it on your own, it's, it's, it's very hard. It's very hard. Because you have to understand everything um, you have learned at school and in Christianity. You don't throw it away but it's not in the same line with what you are learning now. Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, so um, that French writer, Abbe uh, Proyard, uh, he says that Jews are found um, between the coast of Luango and the Congo River. Yeah, so. The Congo has a great river. Eh? It's called the Congo River. It's one of the deepest river in the world. Eh? And it goes through, through Congo, um, Republic of Congo. It goes to uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm -hmm. It goes a whole circle. It's a great, maybe I can show the, the map if I share my screen. This way here. Yeah, so you see the Congo River, it starts here at the Atlantic Ocean and it goes into the interiors. Yeah, you see Kinshasa here, yeah, that's DRC Congo. And you see here Congo Brazzaville, that is Republic the Congo. Yeah, and here you had Luango. So Congo is, uh, is great. It's a great piece of land. As you can see, it's total uh, fruitile. Yeah, you see all the green, see how the rivers run, yeah? many waters there. And Tatanzamba gave the best land to Abana, to Abana. So this Jewish writer, no, not Jewish writer, this French writer, Abba Poyat, yeah? and also um, 
you have another writer. He is called, um, what was his name? God Bay. Now God Bay wrote a book and that book is titled um, the last the last 12 tribe myth if yeah. you want to buy that book it cost you it will cost you almost 5000 euro wow yes for that 5000 5000 dollars not euro but dollars almost now that book is so incredible because in that book he deals about the uh, identity of the uh, Jews in Africa, mm. yeah? Um, and he shows us a really wonderful card. I will just, let me share it to show you. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Now, have you ever seen this card before? No, man. <laughs> yeah, I will try to zoom in. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this, look at this, see? Yemen, do you see on the left side? Yemen Jews, mm -hmm. Falasha Jews, Berber, Moors, and Negro Jews. Now those Negro Jews, all these mentioned here, all those who are mentioned here, the Yemen Jews, the Falasha, Berber, Negro, they were all Negroid, they were all black. Wow. Yeah, they were all black. And here you see the Mafumu. You see here the Mafumbu Jews? Mm -hmm. mm, see? And that's what uh, Rudolf Winsor write about, the Mafumbu Jews who are the uh, also the Yomba of the Yombe tribe, uh, tribes of the Bakongo, is one of the tribes of the Bakongo. Mm, and the yeah. Bakongo uh, is actually the kingdom of Dawidi, whom the world mm -hmm. called David. The Bakongos. So you see the, you see here the Mafumbu Jews, and here you see the Luango Jews here beneath. Do you see? Yeah. Yeah, 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 right yeah, to see yeah. me. See? Here you see you have the Luango Jews. So if you study this map, you will see that Africa was actually full with Jews. Hmm? Oh, as we correctly uh, uh, say, Yahunde. It was filled yeah. with Yahunde or Habiru, the Hebrews. So, and this map is found in the book of uh, Good, Goodbye. Uh, yeah. His full name was H something, Ellen H. Goodbye. Yeah. And he's mentioned also. Uh, in Babylon to Timbuktu, Rudolf uh, Winsor uh, quotes out oh. that book. Yeah, he quotes out yeah. that book. Mm -hmm. And also out of the book of uh, the kingdom of Luango mm, from Abbe Poyard. So all this material, all these writings, all these documentations tell us that beyond the river of Ethiopia, so in the interior of Africa, in the sub-Sahara Africa, the black Jews are still found, yeah? And our mother told us that amongst the Bakongo, there are many who whom always said that they were Jews. Yeah. Many, hmm? like uh, the Luba people, eh? the Kiluba, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the, the yeah. Luba, eh? one of them. And our uncle who lives in... Uh, uh, what France. Was that? in France, in uh, what's that yeah. city? Mm. Uh, mm. In the south. Come on, Fienne. It's it's yes, yeah, mm. mm. Fienne. Yeah. yeah, he he told me in a conversation. He said, "Yes, son, we are the ancient Jews of the Bible." Yeah. So it was a shocker, but the the Congo is very uh, special. Congo is very special. Mm -hmm because it's the center, eh? it's the center, it's the mother of all the Bantus. Yeah. Eh? So um, my next question, hmm? what were the spiritual experiences, visions and dreams that confirmed to you your identity? 
Yeah, so it's a good question. <laughs> let me let me tell you about a dream uh, which I had. I think I was um, 13 years old because uh, my parents told me to write all my dreams down, all my visions. So I did. And um, when I was 13, I had a dream and I would try to translate it wait, wait, into wait, English. Wait. Wait, you were 13. <laughs> yeah, 13. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, remarkable. Because when I was 13, I had a terrible experience with the Mwanda Semi. Mm. Mm -hmm. But I think you know about that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. 13 is a, it's a special. 12, 13. Mm -mm, don't mess mm -hmm. with that. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would try to translate it from Dutch to English. So I, do, I would do my best. <laughs> but I had a dream um, that I was in a very large uh, square. It was an open square and um, I couldn't see its walls. And uh, the square was lined with uh, bright, very bright royal colors that uh, reflected of the gate and the fountain which I saw. And a, f a few yards from me was a fountain that uh, poured out a liquid, liquid which I had never seen before. And uh, the liquid took on different, different colors uh, of the rainbow. And, uh, and the fountain rim was composed, composed of uh, different gemstones. And um, so when I saw the fountain, uh, uh, a few uh, meters, um from the from the fountain was a large gate a golden gate very large uh this this gate this gate was at least uh 10 times my own height and uh next of the golden gate i saw uh, a chair and i looked closely at the chair and i saw a very big man he was very strong and had, had muscles and and a great beard and i i, I looked at him and Directly in my spirit, I knew it was uh, uh, Father Abraham. And I looked at him and I walked to him and I said, um, can you tell me more about my, about my history? And uh, he, he asked me to sit next to him and he started, to tell, he, he started telling me a lot of stories, which I all forgot. I hope that Tan Zambi will, will re put it back in my mind to remember it. <laughs> but I forgot all the stories which he, he told me. And a few moments later, I saw, I saw other men walking uh, um, to us. And this man was a little bit, uh, uh, not, not skinny, but like a normal, uh, normal, um, yeah, normal size. And uh, directly in my spirit, I knew that was uh, Isaac and he came to us and he started uh, telling other stories. And a few moments later, when uh, they stopped talking about all those stories, I looked at the gate and you have to remember, I was 13 years old. So a few moments later, I, I looked at the gate, at the golden gate and I asked um, Singi, Abraham, I asked him, can you let me go through this gate? And he looked at Isaac and he looked at me and he left. And he said, no, because before you go through this gate, you have to learn who you are. You have to learn your history. And then I will let you go through this golden gate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what? Man. And, and, and so he said that, you must first yeah, learn who yeah, yeah, you yeah, are yeah. and yeah. know your history and yeah. then you can go through the golden gate yeah. wow that, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. amazing and that's powerful at that, at that moment i i woke up and what i said i was 13 years old and at the moment i i didn't have a a meaning or a, a confirmation about this dream i told it to my parents to my parents, but they said, yeah, just thank God. <laughs> just yeah, thank God for this wonderful dream. 
<laughs> but now, years later, when, when uh, uh, Yaya Landu, when you told me uh, uh, all those things about this awakening, I, I knew, I knew directly that is what they were talking about. <laughs> so, wow, the, it, it's a very uh, special moment, a very special dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, that's amazing. I, I, I never knew. I never knew. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So, to yeah. enter, to yeah. pass the golden gate, you must know who you are. You yeah. must know your identity. Wow. Yeah, that's it. Wow. And you were that's 13 it. years old. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, just uh, to, to confirm the physique of Abraham, eh, of Insingi and uh, Isaka. So, a few, um, a few months ago, eh, I told you already, eh, but just mm -hmm. for the viewers, a few months ago, I, I had a visitation from Singi, Abraham and Isaka. And Abraham was indeed masculine, you know, like mm -hmm. a warrior, strong. Isaka, he was uh, just a lean, you know, he was lean, yeah. normal, you know, like uh, our brother Haris. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Or, or yeah, Nico, yeah, yeah. Uh, just yeah, lean, yeah, exactly. normal. But exactly. Abraham was yeah, yeah. physique strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's the confirmation on, on, on their physique. Uh, and um, yeah, so really to 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 come to the understanding like i told you when i discovered this you know by uh not by doing research but by the muanda same me who awakened me mm -hmm. i told you and my other brothers we are the people you know and you were just yeah. laughing like yeah oh, at first i, I didn't do. believe you I, I said we are the people or, we are the people <laughs> and you were all like ah yeah. man this, this man is crazy gone mad. <laughs> he's gone mad <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 but it's uh, it's really amazing to see the work of the tanzambe in this yeah? mm -hmm. um, because for many years i have wondered why the African, the so-called Negro and Black suffer in the world. Uh, on the mm -hmm. other hand, we have that superiority in our DNA. You yeah. know, we are strong, we are athletic, you know, we endure. And on the other side, we have that cursed element. You know, that we are cursed among the people. And they call us monkeys, they call us the Zwarte Pieter, uh, and all kinds of names. So I always wondered why Tatan Zambi, why? And when the, our ancestors were revealed to me and they were looking down at me and told me that I was one of them, their son, mm -hmm. it was amazing. For me, that was like, man, just the confirmation. Yeah. So we are getting confirmation upon confirmation that we mm -hmm. are the people, not only by uh, the books that we are reading as research now, because our uh, discovering of who we are did not begin with books. Mm -hmm. We didn't read any, I didn't read any book, you know. Yeah. It came to me by the Muanda. And that's the point that I began to do research and to read mm -hmm. books. And Tatanzambe started confirming because uh, first when I uh, realized that we are the people mm -hmm. uh, and my younger brothers not believing me, it was like, eh, maybe I'm just imagining it. You know, maybe it's not like that. So I had still some doubts, even though I read some books, I did some research, mm -hmm. I was listening to uh, to teachers on online, you know, who are longer in, in this revelation. But when I had that vision of our ancestors in the clouds, and when uh, Abana and Isaka visited me, you know, and the dreams that I had, it was like, no, the, there is no denial. 
Mm -hmm. so, and above that, the knowledge that we accu accumulated by research, and even this last map that I showed you, it's like, wow, we yeah. are the people. We, you can only deny it, but the, the documents are there, the facts are there. We are the people. Mm -hmm. Right? So what did it do to you when you realize that we are the people and not those so-called European Jews in the state of Israel in Palestine? Yeah, it it um, it gives you it gives you um, it gives you answers answers to a lot of questions because um, even in Christianity you go to church. Uh, you you pray on Sunday, <laughs> you go home, and it's not a bad thing. But when I realized um, this awakening, when when I realized the truth, the truth of this awakening, it, it gave me a lot of answers um, to a lot of questions which I had inside of me. And uh, what I did was uh, pray, pray to. To Nzambi, to Tazan Zambi, and I asked him, I asked him to uh, to guide me, to uh, reveal his, himself to me, and um, to confirm that this is him who is showing me these things. And uh, that was that was a very important um, uh, um, part of the journey to pray. And take time with Tatan Zambi. Because you can hear a lot of things, a lot of things from different people. But if you don't get a um, a confirmation inside of you, if the one that sent me doesn't give you that confirmation, it will be very difficult for you to uh, to even understand those words. So what it did to me is um, it changed my whole uh, whole um, way of thinking about myself, about this world, and out about my position position in this world. So those are um, the most important things I would tell to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And now I did research on our family name, yes? And out of the research, um, it revealed itself to us, and to me, and I told, mm. I shared with you, that we are actually from the tribe of Suka, who the world calls Aaron in Suka, eh? and, um, and that we are from the tribe of the priest, because Aaron was the priest. Mm -hmm. So when I told you this revelation, how, how did you receive it? How, what was your spiritual uh, experience? Man. <laughs> Man, I was in shock. <laughs> I was in shock. You know, even even now, when you tell me uh, certain things um, which you uh, got f out of uh, prayer or even out of research, it it's sometimes it's still difficult to to even acknowledge it mm -hmm. or to believe it. <laughs> it's like a dream. It's like a yeah, dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it's, this it's real? Like a dream. <laughs> it's like a dream. Yeah, man. It's like a dream. So. Um, it was all a dream, <laughs> but, but yeah, man, it's, it's, um, I was in shock, but when I took the time to think about it, it's what I said earlier, a lot of things, a lot of dreams, which I had, it, it's just, it's just, uh, this period in time, I'm getting the answers and, uh, the, the explanation about those dreams. So. Even when you told me that we are from uh, uh, from the bloodline of uh, Aaron, it, it it 
it felt like a confirmation in my soul because um, you know it a mother she is um she is a seer um uh i have i have i have had a lot of uh, visitations and um dreams so uh so have you so a lot of our other brothers so it, it it's just building up it's just building up and everything um you are telling it first it, it's a shock and then it becomes a confirmation it's very strange but even when i took time with with Tatan Zambi and with the one on semi it it's um yeah I, I don't know how to explain it but it, it's very strange it's very strange okay do, do you have a dream a vision eh? and something spiritual that happened to you that correspond with this revelation of the yeah, priesthood. I, I can I can I can remember a uh, vision and it was uh, it was it was in my vision I saw you um, and it, it, it isn't uh, a long time ago I have many dreams but I think this is the most uh, I think this is the best example of one of the dreams I had I had a vision and uh, we were together and um, we were in a uh, heavenly heavenly space so wait, I, when did this dream come to you? I think like uh, two weeks ago. Okay. Two weeks ago, yeah. And we were in a uh, heavenly space. So I couldn't see any walls. I couldn't see, um, I couldn't see anything. Only uh, uh, the floor we were standing on. And again, a golden gate, a golden gate. and. Um, the, the the space was filled with colors going uh going from one point to another and when we uh walked to the gate uh, there was an uh, an heavenly being standing there and he opened the gate for us so when we walked inside it uh, we were standing at a very big library a very big library with with um yeah let me say it in dutch who's that your book roller hey you got me one. there <laughs> <laughs> book roller like, uh, book rolls right book rolls yeah i i think so i don't know but um a lot of a lot of scriptures inside of the uh um yeah fucker um wow in uh in fucker like like shelves? sold the shelves? shelves yes shelves, shelves. Mm, books yeah. and shelves mm -hmm. yeah so i saw a lot of uh, uh books inside of them and that heavenly being which opened the uh the gate for us took one of the uh of the, of the scriptures of the book and gave it to us to read and when we read it we fell on our backs and this happens like four five times over was it when we lot. read the whole book or just a section no just a section <laughs> just a section <laughs> <laughs> we no. fell we fell at our backs and this happens like four or five times and at a certain moment i said stop stop it's too much it's too much and that heavenly being said to us why is it too much and i told him it, it, it has a lot of, um, how do you say it? Every time we read it, it was like someone put a, a very heavy presence okay. upon our shoulder. It's the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The power, so that's power, I... glory. Glory also means heaviness. Mm -hmm. yeah? Glory, heaviness. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's, so when, um, so when I told this heavenly being uh, what I said, uh, he stopped, he opened the gate once more, and we walked out of it. And when uh, we walked out of the gate, I saw a um, uh, uh, an slachtafel. Yeah, it's like a, uh, an altar. Yeah, mm -hmm. like an altar. Yes, yeah, a table where they like slaughter animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an altar. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, 
at, at the same moment I saw it, or we saw it in our vi in the vision, I saw a lot of people coming to the altar with uh with kavada, uh, yes, with ropes, um, ropes. with ropes, with gemstones mm -hmm. on the ropes. Mm -hmm. That's when I uh, uh mm -hmm. woke up. Those are the so priestly when, ropes. Yeah, so that's when the vision uh, uh went. Um, so that that's a good example of um, uh, of one of the visions I had, which actually confirmed uh, uh, what you said earlier. Okay, tell us the other vision. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. huh? You choose. Hmm? Your um, most one of the powerful visions after huh? I'll say to this one. Well, this is a actually, powerful vision because they, they are actually yeah. libraries in heaven. And those libraries, they uh, contain books of our history. They contain books of our lineage, yeah, so our ancestry. Mm -hmm. And you also have books of the secrets of the Tanzambi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 a real thing. It's a real thing. It's, uh, what's can, uh, what's very important. What I forgot to tell you. It's like just to show people I'm not making things up. I write them all down. <laughs> but what I forgot to tell you is um, before we uh, went through the gate, I saw a name on the gate, a family name, a family name. So that's to confirm what you said. There are libraries uh, in, in the heavenly uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 mm -hmm. places mm -hmm. with history about family, families. Yes. That's, that's a very important detail, which I forgot to tell you. Mm -hmm. And the spirit is telling me right now that uh, those books and those uh, libraries uh, are libraries uh, with sections uh, of 12 sections and all 12 sections deals with the family of Yisolele, the 12 tribes of Yisolele. Yes? And when Tatanzambe wants to reveal you certain things, the Maleki that is set, the Prince Maleki that is set over that tribe, yeah, will guide you to the, the, the scribe of your tribe. Yeah? Because mm. we have scribes in the, mm. in the scripture. They are angelic beings who, you know, who keep, uh, um, how do you say that? They write down the history of the tribes. Yeah. yeah? So when you enter into the uh, uh, library of heaven, you will indeed see sections that have family names, you know, the tribe of such and such, the family of such and such and such and such. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's the reality of the uh, heavenly realms. Yeah. And like I will say, what you receive in the spirit, you have received it actually. Yeah? So mm -hmm. if you dream and if you enter into that, uh, uh, dimension into that heaven, heaven, heaven dimension. When you enter and things are handed to you or you are made to drink something or to eat something, as you are receiving it in the spirit, you are actually receiving it also in your soul and in this body. Mm -hmm. And it will manifest because certain things I had a dream, for example, uh, no, an experience, an, an experience. So I was sitting in, um, in the metro, hmm? the metro on the way home, and I saw this blind guy walking, you no, know, with his stick, and he was, you know, uh, yeah, searching his way to enter into the met metro, and. Uh, and I asked Tatan Zambe, I said, Tatan Zambe, when will people begin to receive miraculous healing? Hmm? And Tatan oh. Zambe, immediately when I asked that question, I went into a trance. In the metro. Yeah. 
Incredible. Yeah. Immediately wow. when I asked that question, I enter in a trance, like, you know, and Tatanzambe, he spoke to me and he said, when the restoration of all things have taken place, the yeah. miraculous will happen everywhere. <laughs> so first, I didn't know how to interpret that experience. I yeah. was like, hmm, maybe it's a restoration in our family. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a restoration in our church, some yeah. restoration. But now I understand that it has to do with the restoration of the bond to the true and the only biblical Israelites mm -hmm. who are coming back to their identity, who are coming back to Tatanzambe, the creator mm -hmm. of heaven and earth. Now I understand. So most of the visions that we had most of the experiences that we have that Tatanzambe told us something. It was almost like out of place because we couldn't place it. Yeah. We couldn't give it yeah. a correct interpretation. Yeah. But mm -hmm. now that mm -hmm. we are awakened, it's like, yes, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things make sense. Yeah. Hmm? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's exactly it. Um, that's what I said earlier. It's um, okay, a lot wait. of things. Yeah. So tell, tell me this. After that I spoke to you, yeah, I told you uh, that we are the people. You were doubting. Yeah, uh, but what was the vision? What was that vision that convinced you from, hey, we are actually indeed the people do you remember yeah, you you told me um, some people visited you they were downstairs you know yeah. and you asked them <laughs> who are you <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah, yeah tell yeah, us about yeah. that vision wow. tell us wow yeah 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 um i actually had to think about it but yeah that's true that's true um one of those days i think when when was it i think um yeah, a few one month months ago, ago two, no oh. a few months ago a few months ago yeah, yeah maybe a few three months, months ago, ago. I, I had a dream i had a dream um and in my dream i woke up uh in my house so i was dreaming and i woke up in my house and i walked out of the uh, front door and i uh, because we live um at, in an apartment uh, yeah, an apartment and I walked out the front door and I went downstairs and when I was outside I saw three people three people walking and they were different they were different they the way they walked the way uh, they moved and it was different so when I saw them walking uh, 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 past, past me I said wait wait let me go with you guys. <laughs> I said, wait, let me go with you guys. And uh, we started walking together and they were talking about different things and I was just listening. And it, it, even when I'm telling this, I'm thinking of the story uh, of Isaiah uh, at, with the uh, Emmaus Congress. Mm -hmm. How do you say that in English? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Emmaus Travelers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when I was walking with them, uh, at a certain moment, um, they stopped and they said, so uh, now we have to go, we have to, we have to leave you here. And I said, who are you guys? Who are you guys? And um, because they were wearing uh, 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 capuchons. Uh, a hood. A, a hoodie. Hood, a hoodie, mm. yes. And I asked them, who are you guys? And one of them took his hoodie off and I saw a black man a black man and he said to me we are the people and i looked at him and i said my god <laughs> <laughs> because at this moment at this moment um you already talked talk with me about uh about who we are and 
where we are from. Mm -hmm. So he told me, um, we are the people. And I looked at him and um, in, in my dream, I felt like um, it was like electricity went through my body. And when I woke up out of my dream, that was for me the confirmation that I saw actually one of the ancestors. I was walking with one of the ancestors who through my dream revealed, revealed himself to me and made clear that we indeed are the people. Yes, but, <clears throat> but what was the word that they used? Sorry, what did you say? What uh, was the okay. word that they used when they said we are the people? You have to remember me. Yes, because you asked them, who are you? Mm -hmm. Right? And what you told me when you had this experience is that mm -hmm. when you asked them the question that they answered to Zamun to. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, you, yes. You remember? Yes, yes. Yeah, I remember, I remember. Yeah. That they answered you yeah. with Toza Moon too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. But you, yeah. you have to translate it. You have to translate it for, for the viewers. Because yeah. I don't know if everyone will, will understand yeah. what it means. Yeah, Toza Moon too means we are the people. Yeah? And it's actually deeper than the people, just being the people. Yeah? Because Moon too also deals with humanity and the chosen mm -hmm. people. Yeah, when Tatanzambe created man after his image, he, what you read in uh, Genesis 5, when he said, and Tatanzambe created man in his image, mm, that Yiddish, uh, uh, Bumut, Bumut is actually Bumuntu, Bumuntu, which means humanity, the humanity. Yeah. See, so it's, it's crazy. So when they say to Zamuntu, they're actually saying we are the humanity created by Tatanzambe. We are the chosen people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Awesome. So we are still learning. Um, we are still growing. And Tatanzambe is, is, is building up the experiences. Uh, tell me about that last vision that you had with the chariots. Yeah, so I had a vision, um, and it's uh, it's a very powerful vision. Why am I saying this? Because it's uh, it's about a, a, a subject which you have been talking about a lot now <laughs> for a while now, <laughs> and every everyone is asking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you had the you have the confirmation. Yeah. So tell yeah. us about that vision. So I had a vision and um, I saw heavenly, uh, seven heavenly beings uh, on chariots. And um, they came from a very far place and I could see them entering the uh, um, atmosphere, um, mm -hmm. the atmosphere of the earth. And when they uh, entered the earth, um, they, they stopped um, um, at the clouds. And one of those heavenly beings uh, stepped out of his chariot and he took uh, uh, the form of a lion. Uh, and his, his, uh, his manes, his hair, were of fire. And when he stepped out of his chariot, he started roaring Whoa, like a lion, and you you could feel a wind coming out of his uh, the vibration uh, uh, and the power. His, uh, yeah, you you could feel the vibration and the power. And um, I can remember in my vision, I asked Tatan Zambi, "What does this mean?" And he said to me, "These are the seven. These are my seven spirits." And the heavenly being which you are seeing, uh, which took the form of a lion, is the spirit of might. And that's when that's the moment when uh, the the vision went away. Whoa! 
<laughs> crazy, yeah. crazy. So yeah. those seven chariots were coming to the earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of them stepped out of his chariot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he came to you and he transformed into a lion. Mm -hmm. yeah, and his so mane he, yeah. and his mane were like fire. Yeah, it, it was right? of fire. Not yeah, like, the, the lion was, was fire. fire. Yeah. He yeah, was yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was f yeah. fiery lion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Okay, you won't believe this, but actually, mm, I wrote something down. It's it confirms. You are just confirming what I wrote about the seven spirits. Mm, here, mm, it's in my note. Mm -hmm. A spirit of might is the fiery lion who bears the banner of victory. So that, I wrote that just a few days ago. Oh. Mm? Um, but now you, while you're speaking about this vision, <laughs> I just remember from, hey, <laughs> that fiery lion, yeah. that's the spirit yeah. of might. Uh, uh, it also um, corresponds with the uh, experience that I had, uh, I think, one week ago, something like that, one week or two weeks ago, um, as I was praying, I began to meditate. And in my mind, I began to see the gate of heaven. And it was a golden gate. And it went up uh, very high, <laughs> as far as the eye can see, very high. And the gate was open. So I entered. When I entered, uh, Abraham was there. He welcomed me. He said, let's go and take a walk. We are going to Tatanzambe. He wants to speak with you. And uh, as we began to walk, uh, three people came to me. Yeah? Three prophets came to me and they gave me their mantles. They say, we're giving you our mantles because your ministry has some uh, similarities with our ministry, uh, what we had on the earth. So they gave me mm. their mantles. After that, we went on, Abraham and I, we, we continued our walk. And then this lion appeared in the middle of the road. Oh. This huge lion. Mm. He was not uh, made of fire. But he had mm. just that, the form of the lion. Yeah? yeah. So he looked at me. I looked at him. And first I thought, hmm, this must be Isaiah Congo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the spirit told me no this is not Isaiah Congo this is the spirit of courage this is the mm. spirit of power this is the spirit of might and when I wondered so for wow that lion just jumped he just jumped in me like whoop yeah wow and i was like whoa cool after that we continue our walk and this huge sword very long sword appeared mm -hmm. and it also went in me now when i saw that now i when i speak about this sword i remember the prophecy that tatanzambe yamanzulu gave our father and mother gave our parents about me and about our two other brothers. Um, one day they called us together and they called us and they gave us prophecies from Tatanzambi. And what Tatanzambi gave me, he said, Nzambe alobi, nazope so epe. I'm, eh? he said, that Tanzamba oh, says yeah. he's giving you the sword. Yeah, and many other things. But that's what mm. I remember. I, saw, I was like, whoa, that's the sword. Mm -hmm. And that's one. And uh, like 15 ye 14 years ago, so well, 14 years ago, I also had this vision that I came out of my body. 
uh, there were there was two demons who came to attack mm -hmm. me one was huge and hairy all over black and his teeth mm -hmm. were like teeth of piranhas of of uh, shark you know very sharp yeah 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 so i ran out of the room into another room in our old house and there are some people praying mm -hmm. our family praying and uh, and out of the Bible, there was an open Bible there, came this huge sword. And I took that sword and I went and I confronted that demonic power. And I, I just killed them with one slice. Mm. And it was destroyed in million pieces. Yeah. yeah. So that also confirms the sword. So that's a repeating thing. Um, but we do have this confirmation that the Tanzambe is releasing the seventh spirit. Yeah, mm -hmm. he revealed it to me, he revealed it to you. The testimony of two, yeah, everything is established. So the testimony of two and three, a thing is established. So he is sending, or he, he is sending his seven spirits, yeah? and the spirit of might is coming first so mm -hmm. in your um, for all the viewers uh, my lake in Apa, he is also in the prophetic ministry as a priest he is, we are from the priestly tribe yeah, from suka yeah, and we are saku which means priest and saku and most of the priests who were walking in the fear of Tatanzambe, they had uh, a pro pro prophetic mental and anointing. So my younger brother, my Leki, he's also in the prophetic. So to you, this question, this last question, According to the revelation that the Tanzambe reveals to you with the lion who came down from his chariot, mm -hmm. what do you feel in your spirit and what is the Mwanda speaking to you about the powers and workings of the spirit of might? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> If I, if I had the perfect answer, I would give you the perfect answer. Uh, and to be honest, I don't have a, uh, a answer to give you, but I have one thing. There and, are no uh, that... wrong answers. It's just, mm -hmm. what are you feeling and what are you sensing yeah. in the spirit? Yeah. Yeah, because when Tatanzambe gives you a vision, he also deposits uh, uh, a, a a hidden truth in your spirit mm -hmm. yeah so Help. from out that spirit speak yeah that, that's what i wanted to say to tell you there's one thing um which i also told you like i think a few days ago and that's that is that, that um, i have a strong feeling um, um if i think about uh, the vision i told you about about the uh, library and uh the visions which i had about uh the spirit of might that in um yeah what can i say in this in this era there will be a man <laughs> there will be a man who um who that on zombie will give the insight the knowledge of our history to uh, rewrite a lot of things um, which we know about but are not correctly written. So that's that's the inspiration uh, uh, which I get every time uh, when I talk about this. And um, what you told me is that a lot of people have had a similar similar. Uh, uh, um, inspiration from the one I'm saying that there will be someone uh, who, who will get a knowledge of the Tanzambe to uh, write about uh, a lost lost history 
So that's what I get directly when we are talking about uh, this, yeah, this subject. The seven spirits, yes. And to add to that, um, uh, Kimbangu also talked about it. Kimbangu also talked about it. That there is a man who will write, and it is prophetic, it is from the Muanda Semi, that Tanzambe will anoint a man whom by the direction of a Maleki, a messenger, will write down the history and the book of the Bantu. Yeah, the holy book of the Bantu people. And that book, will be uh, controversial for many people. At first, people will reject it. They will say, no, uh, we, it is crazy. Uh, but as time progress, more and more people will come to the understanding that the things that are written there are from Tatanzambi because his spirit will begin to uh, uh, confirm. Yeah, confirm. Now, you know, people can argument it and say, no, it's not correct. How can you do that? Let us not forget that the Biblia, the books of the Bible, were written by men. Right? Yeah. Inspired. Inspired. Originally, those books were written by Bantu men. Habiru men inspired by the Muanda yeah, and dictated by the messengers mm -hmm. of ever of Zulu. Yes. Yes. So before the great king returns, the Tanzambe will anoint people. That's the reason he's sending the seven spirits to mm -hmm. do a restoration work and to prepare the people, yeah, the Bantu, the yeah. Bakongo people, all over the world, in the Western Hemisphere, in the Southern yeah. Hemisphere, in the Eastern Hemisphere, you know, all over the world, wherever they are, to return to the fatherland, yeah, yeah. to return to the land of our ancestors. And when those preparations are, are done, Isaiah, the king, the eternal son of Davidi, who will sit on his throne, will appear. Yeah? So the seven spirits are coming to prepare. Just to conclude, yes, to conclude our conversation, uh, let's read this one first in uh, the book of Malachi 3. Maybe I shall, shall do a video about this. The book of Malachi 3, chapter 1. Behold. Eh? No, <laughs> the book of Malachi 3, first one. <laughs> Behold, I will send my messengers. Yeah. And messenger there is actually not one messenger, but messengers. Yeah, messengers and he shall prepare or they I know why I'm talking like this and they shall prepare the way before me now the me there is the Nkosi 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 that is Isaiah eh? mm -hmm. before me and Nkosi whom ye seek that's the eh? Kusua whom ye seek shall suddenly appear. What does that mean, mm -hmm. suddenly? It's, it's, you, you can't point a certain time yeah. or date. He will just poof, appear. That's suddenly. He will suddenly come to his temple. Who are his temple? The Bantu. We are his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant. That's Isaiah again. Kusua Congo. He is the messenger of the covenant. 
Yeah? So you see, we see that that Tanzambe, before Kusua return, Isaiah, he shall send messengers, yeah? anointed ones, messengers. And that word messenger in Kikongo, Mbasi, Mbasi, means not only messenger, but also ambassador or a deputy. Those who are mm -hmm. sent by the king and represent the king and speak and act in the authority of the king. Yeah. Okay? To reject them is to reject the king. To hear them is to hear the king. To obey them is like obeying the king. So they, will, they have uh, a great level of authority in which they walk and speak mm -hmm. and minister to the people of Tatanzambe. Yeah? yeah? When you read in the book of Isaiah 6, verse 8, who shall we send? Who shall we send? Who shall go before us? Now, that word to send oh. means to send out as an ambassador. Yeah? Who shall go? Mm -hmm. Even Isaiah Congo was sent on the same way. Yeah? Uh, Isaiah wow. 55, I think if I'm correctly, the word that I send shall not return to me empty-handed, but it shall perform all, right? Mm -hmm. So that word is Isaiah who was sent. Like if you read the book of John, he uh, mm -hmm. repeatedly says, the Father sent me. I am sent repeatedly. He's declaring that he is sent of the Father. Yeah. So in the same way, John the Baptist was sent in the spirit and power of Elijah. See, mm. So the messengers are coming. And that's the reason that Tanzambe is releasing, is sending the seven spirits. Yes. Hallelujah. So uh, what are your final words to... Uh, the young, the, the youth, the band to youth who don't know who they are, just to conclude, what are your words to them? I would say, um, I would say even, look, if you are in Christianity, if you are a Muslim, uh, you believe in Buddha, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You need to do one thing. I will give you advice about one thing, and that's um, do research. Don't believe everything just as it is presented to you, but do research. And what I can tell you, if you do research, if you read books or just uh, watch interviews, uh, the one that sent me, he himself will speak to you and he will he reveal himself to you and uh, uh, tell you what the real truth is. Because... Um, you can go to church, you can go home, you can go everywhere you want, but if the Mwandan Semi doesn't uh, reveal himself to you, you won't have the, uh, the conviction, the real conviction. So that's why I also said to you, Yaya, it's like, it was, it was at the moment that the Tanzambi spoke to me. It was at the moment that the Mwandan Semi uh, put that conviction in me. It was from that moment on, I was seeing many things different. So that's the advice I would gi give uh, uh, the, young, the, young the young people who don't uh, know themselves yet. Um, be open, do not only listen, but also search. And uh, I believe the one and same will uh, 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 help you through this process and will reveal the truth in your heart. All right, all right. Wonderful words. Uh, uh, so, Lake Inata, I thank you for your time. Thank you for this uh, amazing conversation. Um, now, to our Bantu family of the world, I say, as you are familiar, Remember our ancestors. Know who you are. 
And let us return to our history, to our identity, because we are the people. Toza Muntu. We are the people of the book. The chosen of the Tanzambi. Right? It's like that. It's like that. We have been lied to. We have been deceived for 400 years. Fed with lies. We have been, you know, uh, brainwashed with white images. But Yesaya Congo is for the Congo people. He is for the Bantu who are scattered all over the world through the Arabic slavery, through the uh, uh, transatlantic slavery. We are scattered by migrations. But these are the time, these are the times of the restitution of all things. Let us repent, know you, who you are, and let us return to Tatanzambe. Isaiah Congo looks like you, so-called black man, black woman. He looks like you, so-called Negro, so-called Bantu. He looks like you. Much blessing to all, and till we, till, until we see each other again. Kembo, Natatanzambe. Kembo, Kembo. <laughs>